All right, hello folks. Got an old canvas up here. I think I'm going to paint today. Figured I'd turn on the camera and record it. You know the rules. If it turns out pretty good, you'll get to see it. If it turns out awful, nobody gets to see it. So if you're watching it, I must have thought it turned out pretty good. That's our normal rules for operations here. I'm going to grab a uh, a two inch, I'm sorry, a one inch brush here. And um, so what I've got here is I've got a 12, yeah, 12 by 24. It's a gallery wrap canvas. I'm not using it because I need that fancy of a canvas, but these are good and I've got plenty of them from a cell. So I'm using them. Now, and you see some things sketched on there. Don't worry about that. This is me playing. But one thing I do like to do is try to find the third way points of all this. So this peak of that little mountain, if, if I put a mountain, that is at the one-third, from one-third down the canvas here. So that's about eight inches of 24 inches. And that will be our horizon line right there. And then right here is our, our secondary third line. So I may put something interesting here. And then we've got trees and things in here. So it's always good to think about composition. And uh, it's something I'm trying to work on myself. I'm not naturally trained. I'm not naturally artistic. So... It's one of those things that uh, I have to think about. And um, it, it helps the painting to look a little more interesting if, if you don't cut a painting off in half. Okay, you'd be better to put your horizon line really high or really low in a painting. All right, so I'm trying a new color, never used it. And I'll show you what it is. Uh, French Ultramarine. I had it and I said, let's see what it looks like. Looks a little, little bit purpley out of the tube, is the best way I can say. And I'm just grabbing a little bit of that on my one inch brush here. Probably grab too much to start with, see if I like it, because I can always, yeah. So look on the paper towel, it has a little bit of uh, purple look to it to me. Let's see what it looks like up here. Oh yeah, it's a nice blue. I know a lot of artists use this, so I, I figured I'd had a tube, why not try it? There we go. Yeah, I like it. It is a, uh, it's a nice, I don't know, it's a uh, purple blue is the best way I could describe it. And I just need a little bit of a sky up in here. The sky is not all that important today. Maybe not even put a cloud because you can see I'm going to have the sky pretty high up. Oh, didn't mean to touch there. You know, you can always just put in blue clouds as I call them. Just kind of swirl the brush in there and make little cloud type shapes. You don't like them, you just take them back out. So I'm just going to push that on down the canvas here. I got to get a little closer. Sorry, my head's going to be in the shot some today. It's hard on these long canvases and bigger canvases that I have to be in the shot. People are always like, several people talk to me about this. You need to be in the paint. You need to be in the video. I want you guys to see my hand. I want you to see the brush. I wish you could actually put the camera right here so you could see the brush moving on the canvas. Um, I don't care if you see me. I'm not the important part of the painting. I'm just kind of steering the boat here. Um, the passengers are what's important. I want you guys to have the best view possible. So, seeing me and even seeing my palette, when it, especially, you know, I don't use a lot of colors. So, it's not that important. Um, plus, if I get on the camera, I've got to comb my hair and you know, look right. Here, I can just get right out of bed and plop down in paint or stay up late and party. I'm kidding. Uh, but if I don't have to be on camera, it helps me to not have to worry about it. Because I think we're all, now I teach, so I'm not used, I'm used to having crowds watching me speak and things. So it's not that, it's just want to focus on the painting. And again, I don't know how dark I want this, but it's, it's something up here. And I don't care to go below that line a little bit. That's good enough right there, I think. Let me look at it here after I blend it. I'll use my old two-inch brush and just kind of blend from the bottom up. And it's got a little bit of liquid white still in it. So I do have liquid white on the canvas, especially at the top of it. Now let's look at it and make sure it looks pretty good for you guys on the video. I like that color, though. I do really like that. Here I go, changing what I'm going to do already on you. Let's take a brush here. Take a fan brush. 
And let's just put some dark clouds like I was saying. We may even put a little touch of highlight on them. I don't know. Wherever you want some dark. The sky is not that important today. We could just throw it in there and move on. What if we have a little bit of interest maybe? Maybe it'd be nice. I don't know. They look awful. Who knows? I like using the fan brush for clouds. Uh, I know like Steve likes to use the one inch. It's his preferred method. For me, I like the fan. The, the one inch, you can get some big clouds on there quick. It takes a little practice doing those. I always get mad at him in class. I said, I like the fan brush. Use a fan brush when we're teaching. Wouldn't really get mad at him. That's a little, little uh, there. And then just kind of blend these down. I don't think I am going to put any highlight on them. I just wanted a little bit of shapes up here. A little bit of shape that are kind of cloudy. Okay, because really the sky, you can see where the horizon line is. And we are going to put a little mountain. And I've been painting too many mountains. The last few besides that mon monstrous canvas. So, yeah, I think it could use just a touch more right in here maybe. Just a little more color. There we go. I was looking at one I did the other day and I don't think I had enough color on it. Put some of that in. That's good enough. Again, most people you could throw that sky in and not worry about it. For me, I sit here and look at it like, oh, I wonder how much I could mess that up. I wonder if I could just keep messing it up. And I can. That's the answer. I can very well or very easily mess it up completely. Alright, don't worry. I didn't cut myself. My tube of crimson exploded on me. I need a little bit of crimson out. I'm bad to sit down and not have all the paint out I want. I don't know why I do that. I've got my bucket here that's got 8,400 tubes of paint in it. So I just got to dig through them. And that's probably why some of them burst. Oh, I can, you can see it's got on my white here. Ugh. Everybody asks me what kind of paint I t traditionally use. I use the Winton, unless I'm teaching a uh, BR class, and then I use Bob Ross paint. I don't do that very often anymore. Uh, use that name. But I do some. I don't know why. So... Now I did a video, and I don't know if I'm going to release it first, or this one first, or do another one, and you'll never see this one. But I was like, this knife is the best knife I've ever used. And I'm like, wonder what brand of knife that is, because I think my, my friend Justin sent it to me when he sent me some brushes to try out. And I figured this out, I googled this name, Stumac. And you can even see, I think, little fret marks on here, that's what those are. This is a guitar palette knife. This may be revolutionary to the style of painting that we're used to doing here. It did wonderful on the mountain I painted that you haven't seen probably, but you will. Um, but it, it also has an advantage here. It's got a straight edge there. It's got the little edge that the Bob Ross knife has, but it also has that third edge. And that's pretty good. I use that little, it's a little bigger than the longer edge. So it's almost like having a small knife here, large knife here, and then a tiny knife right there. So if you find one of these uh, in a music store, grab you one and try it out. And it's very, it's very firm and rigid. So that's that's what we need. So I'm mixing up a little bit of crimson and a little bit of Prussian blue, and I may just because it's in the sky throw a little bit of French ultramarine in there too, and just mix those till they're dark. We're gonna put a little mountain in here. Hey, look, it looks black. You've got it. You don't need to worry about seeing me mix that. All we do is smash that color down on our palette. Pick it up. Turn it over a couple times. You're in good shape. Now I'm going to throw... Oh, I don't want this to be super dark. Throw a little bit of white in here and mix it in. This will also tell you if your color looks pretty good. Yep, that's about what I want. You don't want to get it too light. So add white very carefully. Start with way less than you think you need and then add more. Remember, it's always easy to put more paint into paint, or it's always easy to put more paint on the canvas. Don't keep adding, you know, tons of paint to it. Start with, try it, and then see what you got. All right, look, perfect little cut on that knife. And what we can do here, we build us a little mountain, a small mountain, okay? 
And again, that mountain is just breaking that half, that third line that I've got, that one third line. And that's what I kind of wanted it to do. Just barely kind of break that. I want this mountain to be pretty high in the canvas. So I painted one of these before the scene, similar scene a long time ago, maybe back in 2020, which seems like forever ago. It's already 2023. And I really liked it. Um, and I'll show you what we're going to do as we get through it, but... I wanted to try and see if I could make it better. And I think I can. I, I'm going to start painting some of my older ones and see. Uh, for one, do videos on them. But also see if they look better when I do videos on them. Because if I'm not improving, then I need to I need to, to work on that. Okay. Let that peak be a little bit like that. Have some little juts off of it. Like that. And that's probably good. So what we always do here on the mountain is just... Leave that Kenny Loggins danger zone there. You don't have to go right to the edge and pull down. Just, just right under it, as close as you can. And just kind of pull back on that paint and scrape all that off. We're going to take our brush here in a minute and get rid of that. It's always best to use a clean, dry brush, but I've got one laying right here. Well, let's use one of the other ones. I've got laying right here. Let me put that one up so I don't use it on the video. All right, so this is one of one of mine here. And I've got a little bit of liquid wine in here, but not much. Probably didn't really need any. So I'm just gonna pull that out, pull that out. Is this step super important? No. You could put a big blob of nothing up here and turn it into a mountain if you know where to place the snow. The top edge is fairly important. You wanna get a nice shake, but what's happening down below and and pulling all this out to the left and the right. It does help a little bit, but it's not super important. You can change it. Remember, you can you can move mountains, so you can still move them. So don't worry about too much here. And it's just going to be kind of a standardy shaped mountain. I'm not worried about... Unless I'm getting too fancy here, I'm not going to worry about having uh, different shaped mountains right now. But that's about what I want for that. It's about what I want. And I think I've, I've given you guys this advice before. If you're ever, you're new and you're watching me, you do this, get your shape on there, and you're like, where does my snow, where does my white snow go and my blue snow or whatever color you're using? Scratch your little line places. And that, the, this little line will indicate that the snow all runs this way, the white snow, and then the blue snow runs back this way. And that helps some people. And I don't know, I don't do it when I when I paint, because I've done it enough to know where I want to put that, what I want to do with it. All right, I'm going to throw a little bit of color in this mountain. I'm going to throw just a little bit of, I'll show you, burnt sienna. But there it is. You're like, you're putting brown in the mountain? And when I, I'm going to show you how little I'm going to put on my knife compared to the white. You see that? And then I'm going to mix a... Oh, I got a little blue in there, too. I didn't intend for that. So I want it to be predominantly white, but I want to have a little bit of flavor in that mountain. And let's see what it looks like. Got my little roll of paint there. And for some reason, I've been starting on the big peak. Don't ask me why. Oh, I was going to do something. Oh, shoot. Hold on. That was my fault. Let's scrape that off real quick. I'm going to show you guys a super secret trip. I know I've a uh, tip that I've showed you before, but this is super easy to do. And it will help your mountains look better. Take a paper towel and just kind of rub some of that paint back off. Okay, all you're doing is drying it. You still got, look, you still got the shape there. Don't go outside your shape. Again, remember that Kenny Loggins zone. Go on the highway to the danger zone there. Okay. And that just removes some of the paint. It removes some of the liquid white you may have on the canvas. I think it's a good step or a good tip, but you decide. We'll put that paint down and just kind of let that knife break. Just like that. And this, this guitar repair palette knife is the best palette knife I've ever used. Something like that. And I like that little bit of color we've got in our mountain here. Doesn't have to be brown. Put something, though. 
You don't want your mountain just to, nothing in nature is really pure white, so you thinking of that and say, well, what do I want to put in there? What do I want? Where do I want it? Kind of let that knife go up here. Okay. And the mountain is not really the star of the show here. We're going to cover up most of it. I'll be sure right here. So I'm not all that worried about what it looks like, really. Right there. Oh, there you go. So it's a little bitty mountain today. See, so I like that little bit of color coming out. Oh, yeah. Ooh, there we go. That looks better. No, I'll find some shadows. I don't want much shadows in here. Or I should say I don't want many. Maybe just kind of... About like there is what I want. And if you ever think, oh boy, that's too brown. Well, you could go back and throw right on top of that brown a little bit of white. I mean, that's... Doesn't need it. Doesn't mind doesn't need it, but saying if you're worried about it. See how easy I hold that knife. Maybe the most important thing you could see if that I do. I'm gonna take just a little bit of that, that color of the mountain and I'm going to mix a little white in there. And we'll make a little light shadow. I don't want it to be too light, but a little bit. We want it lighter than the base of the mountain, right? always the key again I'm not too worried about too worried about it right now but too light that may be too light all right I didn't mix it well enough what do you do when you get something you don't like zip it off canvas uh, that should work I mean yeah it should work let's try it right here first maybe yeah, that works. A little, little bit of paint. Very little. What I like to do here on this little guy is kind of just run my knife. You don't need as much paint as I just used. And then kind of twist it like that. It works a little better for me. I don't know. Whatever works for you is what you do, right? We don't worry about what works for me. We worry about what works for you. I can, I can, I can go off and do this myself, so... I've done this before. Maybe a little bit there. Maybe we'll carve out a little bit in here. Kind of find a little bit of a shadow in there, maybe. I don't know. We know we're going to need some right here. So I'm starting to do group Zoom classes, if anybody's interested. And the group Zoom, you'll get to see me. You'll get to ask questions. you get a uh, you know, see me put the paint on like people complain on my black canvas videos. You don't, you're not actually showing, I'm not actually showing putting the paint on. Well, I do that because it, it's kind of boring to sit and watch somebody put paint on a black canvas. But you can see that on those videos. Okay, that's good enough. So if you're interested, you can always go to paintwithbram.com or, or my YouTube. I'm sorry, my Facebook. I usually list them on there too. Maybe I'll put them in the little comment section we have here on the YouTube channel. And if you got your own supplies, it may be a good way to paint with me. You don't have to pay as much. And you get as much of my time as you need, probably. So the first one we're doing is already on here, but it's a pretty cool one. I'm just tapping a little bit down in here, making a little bit of mist. Let me go this way with it. Always try to tap in the direction that your mountain kind of flows. There we go. I like that little peak. It looks I could you I could sneak just in there just one real one second. I won't hold everybody up here too much. Just if I could get just a little bit more. Right in here. It looks like that one's kind of I don't know. I can't explain it today. I taught 18 people last night. So. I had a lot of fun. They had a lot of fun. You can always tell when people are having fun doing something. You get laughing. All those good things. And that's more important to me than what paintings look like. 
I can always, it's not a challenge that I tell people to try to give me, but I can always make their paintings look fairly decent. And, um, you know, again, it's not me bragging or anything. It's just, I've done it enough. Let's see where we're at. Are we under 20? We're right at 20 minutes. That's good. Again, I don't worry about the time. I'm just trying to, I don't want it to be like another three hour painting, which you can already see we won't be. But I don't, I've already tapped it, but I want to go in here and I just want to create some more mist. So I took a clean brush and I'm just going to really be loose with this. See, there's nothing really down here on the canvas. Let me go up there and grab some of that one. Look at that. I'll tell you what else we could do. I think would look pretty good is if we take a little bit of white on that brush and it'll kind of be a maniac here with this stuff. Making some mist and fog down in here. You can tap it up if you want. I don't really need to, I don't think. But we don't really want to know where that mountain stop, stops. It could be way down behind. The, we have a bunch of trees here in front. We need to take a brush and just kind of pull on, on this back. Here we go. There we go. That's what I was wanting right there. Yeah, there we go. I didn't want to bring it much dark down, but it's okay. So there's our mountain. Super easy little mountain today. I liked a little bit of color in it. Try that sometime, guys. Don't just throw pure white on there you could put just the could have put just the ultramarine in there because i mean probably would get a little bit of that color on there right all right now comes the fun part now comes the fun part so i'm going to take some of my ultramarine I'm going to wipe my knife off start with the clean knife take a little bit of that ultramarine there a little bit of prussian blue about equal parts and then i'm going to take some Viridian, and I don't know what this is going to look like. I want to mix it and I want to try it first. I want to get a, a feel for it before I tell you guys if you want to use it or not. More Viridian than the other colors. Viridian or Thalo Green, whichever you have. And what's my Viridian? Because there's a couple different kinds. Viridian Hue. Okay. Viridian Hue. Mix that up pretty good. Mix that up pretty good. Be careful. Don't put too much Prussian blue in there. It, Prussian blue is just so strong. All right. And I need a little more Viridian out. Right here's what I'm using. Okay. You can see it's got a hole in the tube too. My hands are going to be uh, red, white, and blue here in a minute. Red, white, and green, I guess. Big Christmas tree. So I've been having some audio issues. A couple of the videos, I get to a certain part, and it turns me into a robot. So I don't know what that's about. But I uh, I did order a new mic. I did order a new camera. So I've always been painting on my phone, so I'm going to try out an actual camera now. I'm going to go to a one-inch brush here. And this is just going to be some background stuff. We got trees that live all back in here. And you just look, I'm turning the brush up. I'm not turning it like this yet. It's kind of bouncing some things in here. And I don't know if these colors will work well together, but we'll try them. I'm just going to smack this in. I don't really care. I want to save some of that mist behind the mountain. What they look like right now, they won't look like here in a minute. So that's pretty much, now let me tell you what I'm going to do. That's pretty much straight Viridian Green with just a little bit of that color I was mixing up. So I added a little bit of the color, the Prussian Blue, the French Ultramarine, and the Viridian mixture. But I used mainly Viridian there. Now I'm going to go to the darker mix. And we'll just kind of smack in some more trees in here. This is just for background. You, these are not trees. These are just colors. You're gonna be cra you're gonna think I'm crazy here in a minute. And you can also even just use some straight Viridian occasionally. I'm trying to get that little line right there. Okay, and that's probably good for what I'm going to do. Again, I don't know if that looks right. We'll have to just play around with it more than anything. Yeah, you could all, I could have, what I should have done is put a little bit of the French Ultramarine up here. Now I can go back and throw a few in there. 
This is the, the highlight or the shadow color for the mountain. Kind of go over some of that with that. Okay. Yeah, they don't look like trees yet. Don't worry. They may at the end. They may not. I don't know. What do I want to use here? Yeah, we'll use that one. We'll use that one. We'll dirty every brush I got back here. Hold that so it doesn't sound like I'm beating a drum here all of a sudden. Oh, what am I doing here? Oh my goodness. I don't care about those back in there. Ugh, yuck. Looking pretty bad, then we know we've got it. You can just kind of mess those out. It doesn't really matter what happens down here. You can clean your brush out. Okay. All right. So, we may, we may put a little bit of highlight on there. And you can always look at it and say, well, let me see. I may need a little more dark right here. Okay, because that's a little further down the canvas. I may need a little bit right here. Who knows? Okay. You know, just kind of sock in a little more dark if you need to. There's no shame in going back over what you just did. Remember, we're not racing here. Okay. Okay. And these are not so far away that I'm worried about too much mist in there. I will clean off that knife again. I always like to have a clean knife. Now, when I say this knife is great, the, the other knives I use are fine too. So don't think you got to run out and buy a guitar palette knife or something. I just want some stuff happening back here. I'm just scratching. Scratching some little tree limbs and tree trunks and, and whatchamacallits in there, whatever you want to call them. I don't know. Wherever we think they're going to be. And we can cover them. If you don't like some of them, you just go back over them with the knife. Oops, the knife. Don't go back over them with the knife. Go back over them with the brush. Yeah. Something like that. And again, you could put a thousand in here. You could just, you could spend all day just scratching little things in here. Knife's bent or either my hand is crooked. Probably my hand. More is probably better than less. We're gonna put a little highlight on all that stuff anyway, so it won't matter. So I'm thinking of, and I, I wish what I wish I'd used was a little Prussian blue and French ultramarine on this guy, so the colors don't look quite right to me. Never know until you try those. So I wanted to try it. I had a tube of it. You may like it. Who knows? It's always best in a painting if you kind of keep the same color palette. So you're using French ultramarine. Put some ultramarine here. Put some there, put some at the end. All right, what do we want to use? Oh, let's use this old guy. This is our old Wooster brush here. Cheap old guy, five something on Amazon. It works pretty good for bushes. Let's just grab, I've got a tube and I'll show you just so you know. It's not cad yellow exactly. It is cad yellow hue. So, the, what you're looking for in the Winton brand that would be the normal cad yellow that people are used to seeing people on TV use is cad yellow light hue, okay? Cad yellow light hue. But this is cad yellow hue, and you can see it's a little more... I don't know the exact, but it's almost... It's very gold color, a yellow gold. That doesn't make any sense, but I think you, hopefully you know what I mean. It's not the, not the color you would see like Bill Alexander use or Bob Ross. So I want to go back here. I don't want to cover all these up, but let's just say maybe there's a tiny bit of highlight back here. Just kind of dancing around back in there. Oh, that, now see, that's looking better. This yellow goes good with the, with the colors that are right here. And I'm just using that brush, turning it up straight. I loaded a good bit of paint in it. Look at that. And I'm going to let the brush run out of paint occasionally and just sock a few on there because I don't want them all to be the same value here. 
Let's go ahead and do this one. I like this one. And you're just thinking of little tree shapes back in here. These are probably, I don't know, maybe birch trees. I don't really know what they are. They're, they're my trees, so whatever we want them to be, I guess. Now here's another thing. You can always see yeah, I stop there, but you can always kind of come right in front of that one and just sock a little more, okay? Now you can get several yellows out. It's probably better to have several. I've just got the one out. Maybe there's a, oh, there's a nice bright one there. That's not too dark, but you see a lot of the highlights. Need a little more, Need a little bit more. We know our light's coming from this direction, so the tree would be more highlighted probably on that side, but it needs something all the way down. There we go. Make sure you don't have a little row of trees like I almost do. Let's change that. Let's put, ooh, that's got a little different color in there. Starting to pick up a little bit of that blue and you're getting a little green here. Don't care for that one, so I'll just go kind of outside of it. That one's a little fuller. It's full of itself. All that's going on. And maybe just a little tapping down in there. I don't know. Something like that to get us started. And then as we work down here, I'm going to show you a little color change. I'm going to take a little thalo green and a little bit of our dark, just a tiny bit, and go to the yellow. Now I'm going to use a little bit of liquid white or paint thinner, whatever you've got handy. Either works well. And put a little bit of that in there. And this is this is pretty much straight thalo. Thalo makes a pretty, pretty green with this yellow. Ooh, a little more thalo we look though. There we go. There we go. There we go. I want some of these to be a little more green. That's not going to show up good enough. A little bit more liquid white, maybe. I might have to clean my brush. There we go. A little more thalo green in there will work. That's perfect. Perfection. These are a little more down in the shadows. Now, we'll probably put a couple clean ones down in here. That are mostly that color, but I want a little... Start thinking about these are getting the light. These are getting down in the shadow. That's all that's happening. Wherever we think. Wherever we think we might want a little bit more. Okay. I probably, I probably, I'm going to add a little bit more liquid white and watch what it does. Watch what this does right here. Where do I want this guy at? I guess I'll just use this one. Yeah. Whoop! Look how bright that is. Looks like a uh, mint ice cream there. Chocolate chip mint ice cream. Go back, maybe there. Maybe there's one right here. I don't know if these are trees. Some of them might be bushes. Whatever. And see, we've got it laid out pretty good there. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. I think that's going to work. I think that's going to look okay. Not a fancy painting. I kind of wish I hadn't used one of my good canvases. But it was laying here, and I said, oh, I'll use that paint. Uh, the gallery wrap canvas, if you can get them on sale, they're some of the best you can buy. They're nice and tightly. Um, the canvas is really tight, almost like a drum. Uh, you can put a little water on there and get a little, a little better than that even. Alright, let's change the color a little bit again. I went to another more um, yellow color. That was a little, yeah, I don't know about that. I'm going to take that one out later, but for now we'll just kind of just sock some other color in front of it. Just to kind of knock it down a little bit. Alright, we can always sneak back in here and... Maybe there's one right there that's a little odd. Look at that. Just kind of go back in here. There's thousands of trees in here. Okay. Thousands and thousands of trees. 
And we'll take that really dark color now. Yeah, I don't know. Is there a path back in here, maybe? Who knows? What about another bushes? I'm going to sock in a little more dark. Something for me to either make more bushes out of or highlights. I said I was working off a of painting, but I've already decided that I'm just going on another way. And, and when I say I'm working off painting, it was my painting. I'm not still in a painting. I believe people accuse people of that. Especially people that didn't do it or don't do it. You, know, you put a you put a painting on YouTube. I expect you guys to paint that thing. You can always give me a little shout out, maybe. But heck, if you don't do that, I ain't gonna be real mad. So what? The world is nasty enough. I'm tired of being nasty. I'm just tired of being nasty. We all probably are getting tired of that. There we go. It's filling up pretty good. The only thing I really don't like, guys, if I'm, I'm being honest and I like to tell you what I see, I don't like the French. I like the color. I like the French ultramarine, but it doesn't go as well with this painting. I don't think. But you may like it. And after I do that, I'll, I'll even scratch some more prominent ones in. Right through the paint. Just kind of like that. This one's bothering me. I may cover that one later. We're not dumb. I mean, you know, we still got a third of a canvas here to go. And right there, where was my mark? Somewhere in here is the third, is another eight inches up. Eight inches down, eight inches up, put something interesting. So I was watching a, a good movie, um, but one of my favorite directors, one of my favorite filmmakers, one of my favorite artistic humans, his paintings and everything, is David Lynch. Uh, Twin Peaks, Mulholland Drive, Blue Velvet. Blue Velvet's probably my... Uh, I can't tell you my favorite, but... All those things. David Lynch is just an amazing filmmaker. Crazy. Crazy as... H-E-double-L. And uh, I just... I love him. I just... Uh, everybody would like to sit down and talk to... Historical figures that are dead. I would rather just sit down and have a cup of coffee with David Lynch. And, and that would... Honestly, if I could sit down with Bob or sit down with David Lynch, I'd pick David Lynch. Because I can sit down and talk to Steve, that new Bob. So, But this kind of a, a weird guy in a weird way, in a, in a good way. But he was in a movie called The Fablemans. It's about Stilvin, Stilvin, Steven Spielberg's life. Uh, it's not... You know, the character, and it's not called Steve Spielberg, but it's funny him him growing up and things. It's worth a watch. It's a good movie. Um, but David Lynch played John Ford. John Ford was the director of many wonderful westerns and other things, but The Searchers, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, um, there's so many others. He won the most Academy Awards for a director. He's won four. Or he won four. He's long past. I think he was born 1912 or something. Or maybe he was born in the 1800s, I think. So uh, he plays, David Lynch plays his character. And what they're talking about in that movie is pretty much verbatim what John Ford told a young Steven Spielberg about making pictures, Okay. And then we're talking about directing films and making films. Same thing that goes along with art. He said, walk over there and look at that piece of art. What do you see? Well, in this one, we'd see a mountain and trees and grass. He said, no, no, no. Where is the horizon line? And the horizon line would be up at the top. And he said, okay, walk to the next one. He said, where's the horizon line? It's down at the bottom. So they had cowboys standing up and different things in the distance. But the horizon line was way down at the bottom of the canvas. He said, when you can determine why a horizon line at the top and a horizon line at the bottom is interesting and not right in the middle, that's when you'll be a good filmmaker. So, same thing for an artist. You want to start looking at those things. Don't smack everything just randomly on the canvas. Think about it and think about laying it out as a, you know, as a painting or a picture. Same thing when I take pictures at the beach. I either want more sky in the in the painting and a little bit of beach and, and water, or I want more water and very little sky. It makes for a more interesting composition. And that's what, you know, I'm no artist. I didn't go to school. 
but it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense to me. And if you start working that way, in thinking about those things, and thinking about composition, it will make more sense to you. It'll also make your paintings just a little bit more interesting. And that's all we're wanting, isn't it? We want our painting, somebody to look at our painting and say, wow, that's pretty good. Even just an easy little painting like something like this. That's all we're wanting in life, I think. I'm using that same um, color here just to make a little, little grassy highlights here. I should use my two inch. I like the two inch to make a lot of grass. It, let's just grab one. Doesn't matter if it's dirty. Here we go. There we go. It's got a little green coming in here. Yeah. There we go. And I don't know if I want this in here or not. I may scrape it off. May not look right to me in a minute. Stick around and find out, you know. And I'm really not worried about this being too detailed. Yeah. Let's go back to the one inch. I think it was doing better for me. You know, if it's not sticking, I, I would highly advise trying not to use the liquid white so that you get the pure color. But if you need a little bit, it's okay. Nobody will yell at you. Kind of dancing a little bit of a a little bit of grass back in here. We're going to have, you can even, this is how I like to do grass anymore. Just take the brush and kind of push up on it. You're not going to see much of this here in a minute. You're going to see why. Once we kind of get started. Once we get started here. And when I talk about those things, I don't know what I'm talking about usually. I can understand it listening to someone else talking about it. But do my paintings follow what I say? Probably not. But I'm working on it. I'm always working to get better. Even a simple painting like this, I want it to look good. I don't want it to just be something I throw out here because I want you guys to get me views on YouTube. It's got to be something better. It's got to be something decent. I've had a couple I've just thrown away that I did videos on. I threw the video away so I'd never release it because it didn't look good. I showed the picture to someone, I showed the painting, and they're like, oh, I love that one. I didn't. It's got to make me happy. Or, or if it doesn't make me happy, it's not going to make you guys happy. If you're not happy, you're not going to watch. So, All right. Just a little highlight there. And I'm going to take that same color, that same dark color, just a little bit of it. And I'm just going to smack some color back in here. I'm going to try to save most of this highlighting, but I may grab a little bit of it. We'll have a little path, if you can imagine, kind of goes like this later on, but I'll find that in there. It's just kind of dark, and you can have a lot more luck with it if you used a two-inch brush, probably. Probably. I don't know. There, we can just, I mean, you can literally just kind of... Throw this in here. What if, you know, I might change my mind. I'm kind of liking the colors I'm getting. We may have water. This is mostly phthalo green, a little bit of blue, a little bit of that um, French ultramarine in there. Just for... Yeah, let's have a little water. Now we'll have a little bit of land down in here, a little pond. It's not going to be a lot of water, but a little bit. Yeah, yeah we just turned it into water. So... Again, I don't know. I might have to put a little dark under here and kind of figure out where my, my water line is. That's what I'll do right now. Yeah, I kind of like the water idea. Let's do that. Again, I had an idea for a painting and then I'm just changing it. That's the best thing. It's the most amazing thing you can do. Change your mind. That's what I get on to people that rush through paintings. You don't get time to change your mind. Maybe that's a good thing for some people. I don't know. But for me, I like to be able to think about it and say, does that look like what I intended it to look like? And it's probably best if you kind of just go through the paintings as you're, as you're learning. And get them done. Pull a little bit of that dark down for a little reflection. I'm not going to worry about reflecting like too much of this. There we go. 
and we'll, we'll mess around with it. So I'm not done with it. There we go. Okay. Now I do, I do want to take pretty much a really dark color. Really dark color here. And show you what I'm going to do because I got to have some room for some trees. Somewhere in here, we'll just put. I'm just going to go all the way across. It's just going to be a pond. It's not going to be a uh, a lake that or a river that runs out. So it's a little fishing pond that you can go down to. It needs to be a little darker. Let me find a little more Prussian blue. May get to the end of this and wipe this off and never be seen again. Or I could save them, like you know, a lot of music artists do. And uh, something happens to me, they'll be like, "Oh, we found a, we found another Bram episode." Oh my, he never put this one on the YouTube channel. Oh, this is amazing. Oh sure, tell me more, right? We all need to see that. I put a little French ultramarine, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I put a little French ultramarine and a touch of, touch of, um, oh shoot, what's that, Viridian in there. <laughs> yeah, and just smacking some dark down here. It's pretty dry down here. This is why I, I sometimes just wait. I don't need to put the, the liquid white all over my canvas to start with. It's kind of crazy that people do sometimes, honestly. Now, if you're painting fast, like you were doing a demo or something, you probably want to throw that on there, but... And also wipe it off if you don't need it. There we go. And then, of course, that's going to get highlights. It may even get a little darker. I may throw a touch of black or something on it. I've got green and red out. I can make a black and throw on there. All right, so we want probably, before I do anything, I want to work on this real quick just to make sure it looks right. I want all this to kind of angle to the water. And just a little bit more right there, maybe. I really wish that was a little darker. What if we did that? Sorry. You know, I paint. we should call this the painting backwards with Bram show. Things you should do first. And, and you'd be better to use a one inch here. I'm not really that worried about what what this looks like though. Just trying to sock a little dark under there. Painting is going to look really weird if you don't have enough dark under those reflections. I see people all the time post beautiful paintings but they didn't reflect their trees. <laughs> it looks like your trees are floating. There we go. Something like that's a little better. I think. Again, that's an opinion. You know what opinions? Everybody's got one just like something else. All right, I'm going to take a clean knife. I'm going to grab a little bit of white. Maybe a little bit of yellow. A little bit of yellow and white. Ooh, let's not get the green in it. Let's do a little yellow. Let's do a little uh, Bill Alexander painting today here. I want that to have a nice, pretty thick. Needs a little more white. There we go. Pretty thick little little water line here. Murky water on it right next to that stuff. I don't know if I like that, but I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna mess with this this part because you will not see it all here. Maybe there's a little little bit that kind of comes around there. Another way to do a water line, I don't know if I've ever shown you guys this. I probably have, and you've probably seen other people do it. Is don't saw your knife, just kind of go back in here and touch it. Leave it kind of thick, okay? There's nothing wrong with having thick paint on a painting. Everybody I know, including myself, wants to start out by, oh, I gotta soften that down, I gotta, especially with clouds, I don't understand the clouds. Let me soften this down, let me, let me take my brush and destroy the tops of these clouds here by pulling up on them. Again, another opinion. <laughs> I tell you, if we got a little bit that much, that much right there, why don't we have a little bit, kind of, couple spots down in here. Oh, I like it. 
you've never seen a Bill Alexander painting, please look up Bill Alexander. Wonderful. And his autobiography is worth a read. Okay. If you go to that really long mountain painting and do the first part of it, somewhere about probably 20 minutes into it, I'll show you one of my Bill Alexanders that I own. Something like that. I like that look. I really like that look, actually. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I am going to do something crazy if I've got a brush line here. What's that right there? What is that? Oh, that might work. Let me try this. It's a dry brush. Okay, that's my dagger brush. Oh, this is scary. This is the scary part. There's a tree. Wipe that brush off. I may even do another little trick for you guys and show you what I what I think you should do. So you gotta figure out where that one starts. It doesn't really matter in the sky. We need to, I'm gonna put a bunch of birch trees on here. You thought I was gonna have a quick video. I'm almost done. Nope. You were wrong. You were wrong by a long shot. Okay. Let's see here. Let's put one right here. I don't care that I'm, I'm making color on the canvas there. Show up. Let me grab something. I'm going to show you guys a cool little trick. All right. Hopefully the audio stays okay. Sometimes when I start and stop it, it, it does weird stuff. So I am going to, I'm going to take a Q-tip. I'm actually going to use a Q-tip for this. Look that paint I pulled off there with that Q-tip. Okay, grab a clean one now. I'm not too worried about this one. I'll go over a little bit. One of the things about painting birch trees is sometimes they get a little messy, especially when you're trying to paint over something. So, if you take something, take a paper towel, oh, touch my water there. We'll finger paint there for that one. I need, let's do at least three. We'll probably have a couple more than that, but we'll do three big ones. There's another one that kind of starts here and kind of cuts through here. Oh, and it lives, it lives in there with that one. You don't have to remove every bit of paint. But it does help a little bit. All right, let's start with those three, okay? And we have the ability to make black with what I have out on my palette. Because I need a little bit more to run out. Viridian green and a lizard and crimson make a beautiful black. And that's what we'll start our birch trees out with. Or I need both of them. <laughs> I thought I, had them, I thought I had plenty of each one laying out. I make a mess when I paint, guys. Does anybody else make a complete mess? And there's really no excuse here because I've painted long enough to know not to make a mess. Or maybe I'm just having fun. Who knows? Green, a lizard, I'm sorry, a lizard crimson and thalo green or viridian will make a beautiful black. Uh, it's about equal parts. Maybe a little bit more green. You just mix them up. You get a really nice black. A little more green in there. Now, it doesn't really matter. Look. Whew. Pretty. Pretty pretty black and pretty. So, let's do our let's do our birch trees now. Oh, this is always the part I hate. This will get you used to doing the white, so I always recommend kind of doing a few of them like this, but then you can just take the knife and kind of close in both sides here. You get a lot of black on there. Makes a good bit of paint to do birch trees. 
I'm already seeing something that Bram always forgets to do. And I don't know why Bram is talking to himself like Jimmy on Seinfeld. I need to find those bushes. I just forget. It's not me thinking I can do everything backwards. I'd rather not do everything backwards. Take that knife and just run. Almost there. I'm sorry, I had to stand up here. All canvases may not be the best for videoing. It's good to keep them a little skinny. Not every birch tree gets huge. The only thing you really have to worry about is not letting them get too wide at the top. Because birch trees can get very large trunks on them, so. There we go. For the sake of time, you see how I'm doing that, right? For the sake of time, we'll do it a little differently. If I've got a brush here. I can use this one. Now, I will say the, the fan brush, if that, what I'm going to use, or the filbert, either one. Actually, I could use that diagonally fan brush. This makes, this will make them. Putting them on with a knife is a little easy, uh, a little better when it comes to the next step. But for me, I, I'm so used to doing it both ways. I, I can do it this way, but I would almost encourage you, if you've never done one, do it with a knife and see what you think first. You'll be amazed at how much different it is. And you, don't, you want to leave some chunkiness to this paint. You're not trying to make the paint smooth. There's one. Oh, that one could come up a little higher. Even. We'll just kind of smooth out what's in here. And again, if you leave a little chunk here or there, it actually looks better. It actually works better. And you don't have to do that Q-tip step or take a dry brush and go through. But if you're struggling with these birch trees, you can let the painting tack up for a day. Come back and throw these in at the end. Right over the dry paint. Right over that dry paint. I'll get a little green on there. You also don't have to use black. You could use a brown color. Ooh, I got a little big on me. Uh-oh. I will not worry about it. It happens. Trees grow. Whew, that one grows right in there. It's picking up a little bit of that. This looks like a Bob Ross painting for sure. Hey, you got all that back. Oh, let's throw some trees right in front of everything, right? Oh, goodness. You could have. It comes a crazy part. That one could be really tall. You may hate this painting at the end. But it's a tall, long canvas, and we want to kind of fill it up. We need three or five. I wouldn't put seven. I don't know how you'd fit seven on here, but let's do another one. Smaller one. Don't let me forget. I want to do the bushes next. There we go. And don't let them all stop on the same plane like me. I'll, I'll fix that at the end, but it doesn't really matter for now. Like, hey, at the end, this one comes all the way off. You know? There's a little bit more depth in there. We got four. We know we need one more. Where do we have room for one more? I don't even know. It could go. I just gonna mess up the mountain right there. I guess small, just a little bit smaller than that one. Right here. there somewhere okay so we got that laid out let's put our bushes in need a few bushes in there i think told you you wouldn't see much of that mountain when we started all right let's do some more yellow i like that yellow and the greens and stuff mixing together this is again that cad yellow Hue. It's a little more goldy looking. 
back in there is important right between the trees is important you don't want to get a little bit more of that paint out I'm not even a fan of yellow but I like this yellow in this painting hey okay so we just we gotta just trying to put a little bit of something back in there so right on the lake edge we'll have some stuff go over those trees and then we can kind of go back over them okay now we can now we can work with that now we can make that work but what we better do what we better do is clean off our knife and get out some clean white titanium white Oh, I picked up a tube of brown. Uh, apparently, I'm going crazy. There's white. There we go. All right, where can we put that? Where can we put it on my nasty... Oh, I forgot to show you guys. I took a picture of my palette when I did one of those paintings. I said I'd take a picture and show you and forgot to put it up. I'll try to remember to do that. A little bit of white. Let's do one of the little ones first. Let's do this one. You want to put that on there and just give it a little pull. A little pull. I'm going to run into an issue here. My white's thicker than the black. Let's try this one. There we go. we go a little more yeah I may run into an issue here there we go try not to go back over more than once just kind of let that paint touch and then give it a little pull you'll be in better shape if you do yeah I don't paint enough birch trees because they get a little messy And I like to paint the white on those, and then we paint the, the, the branches. It just works better that way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to put a little bit of something in my paint here. There we go. A little bit more paint. Don't be scared. Don't be as scared to use paint. almost takes my full concentrate uh oh messed that one up we'll fix it show you what to do here let's do this big one go right side and get a little bit of that y'all that's fine comes all the way down there yeah, that was not too bad for a birch. Uh, so like in a little area like that, if you see something you don't like, just kind of take a little bit of paint. Just kind of go back over it. Touch it right on there. There we go. Okay. Pull that knife. Pull that knife. There we go. So you can get that little round in action. Your tree will actually look round. And that's kind of important. If you can't get it, it's okay too. We won't yell at you too much. I'm going to stand here in front of this. Yeah, sorry. Touching too much of that green when I go with the white. There we go. A little bit up in here. This is where I get scared. I get really scared up in here because if you get it in the sky, it's kind of done. You can turn it into a cloud, maybe. I should have stuck with three. It's been a uh, shorter video. There's people that do better birch trees than me. 
and do them easier. Kevin Hill does birch trees really well. Paints them quite a bit different. This is the way Bob did them on the show and stuff. So, I'm going to try them this way. That one doesn't look too bad. We're going to put a little blue on the other side and try to round it. So if you get, like I said, a little, little section, you can always go back and go, no pressure. If you don't like mountains, you probably won't like birch trees. Pretty much the same same technique, just going this way instead of like this. This is the one I'm going to work on. So let's just uh, let's let's work on the bigger ones and get those done. You guys don't want to sit here all day with me. I'm just kind of taking that knife and just giving it a little pull. I want to get closer to the canvas here. Remember, they can be a little fat down at the bottoms. As long as they look like birch trees, you won the battle. And then we still have to put um, limbs on them. This is where a steady hand helps. I didn't mean to do that, but I'll clean that up with the other, the other swoop. I was thinking I would have done my birch trees to where the highlight would have been on the left. It's easier for me for some reason to do this way. I don't know why. They look kind of like birch trees though, especially when we get some limbs on them. We can start at the top, and at the top you can just barely touch a little bit on them. We've got a couple of white birch trees in our yard. And what I notice, a lot of times people are like, we well, didn't put any white on the on the limbs. My birch tree limbs don't have white on them. Well, snow on them maybe at certain times. But they're not white. pressure on that knife all right besides that one the rest of them are pretty good there's a little mark on that one I don't like let's see if we can corral this ugly one right here yeah a little bit there some of it's that water that I put on the canvas there some of it's my unsteady hand What happens, you just have to let them grow sometimes. I'm going to start doing more of these so I get better at them again. You guys will just have to suffer there watching me do them. Too big on me. There we go. Yeah, a steady hand is probably more important than anything. <laughs> All right, so we want to take, make sure we're still recording. Yep. We want to take now and put a little blue on the other side. And we'll use just a little bit of Prussian blue. And we can use whatever we were using that got a little dirty and make it a little bit bluer. So it's a tiny bit of Prussian blue. I'll show you what the color looks like. And you don't need to do the whole tree up and down. This is my favorite part because you don't have to do the, the entire tree. Just here and there, a couple spots. You're going to get a little blue. 
indicate some shadow on the other side of the tree. All right, here we go. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. Skip a little bit occasionally. Let's have to clean that up. Look at that, how much nicer that looks. It looks rounded now. And again, like I said, I, if my hand isn't shaking this way, I can usually make them look a little bit better even. And they probably don't need much. See that one? Now that looks good to me. Well, for these kind of birch trees, it looks good. Let's just do this one. Touch that dark, pull, a little bit of a, it's almost like, like this. What I was saying, I should have started on this side, with the white. Because I can make that, for some reason, this is a little more, this is easier for me than, than this one. Don't know why. I'm backwards, so that's all I know. Maybe you'll find that the other side's easier, and this will be the hard side. We'll take this one up a little bit higher. Just touch a little bit there. Yeah, now they're looking like birch trees. Uh, now this is the this is our problem child here. Can we make it look like something? By just putting a little blue on the other side, maybe. Oh yeah. Well. Well, boy, howdy, I think we did it. That blue really is filling in those gaps. And If you, you want to save some of the black, you want to have a little blue and a little white. But again, you don't need this all the way up the trees all the time. Get a little bit occasionally, it looks better. I'll show you one little last trick as we do this last one here, after I get this last one done. And then we don't have too far to go. Whew, it's a big one. A little noises help. I think people think I'm crazy when I say that, but they really do. Especially when, I, when I'm working and I need to be super soft on something. I will actually whisper to myself. You know, I mean, I watched Bob when I was a kid, so I grew up with that stuff. When you grow up in a hospital for several years of your young life, you gotta watch TV sometimes. It's all we didn't have the internet. You feel awful, you don't feel like reading. I turn old Bob on or, or Mr. Rogers or any of those things. There we go. Now, what you can do is clean off your knife. Paint to make my nose run again, as usual. And get me a little bit of clean, clean, clean white. Like super clean. Nothing in it. Whew. Here we go. You find a little spot that you don't like and you try to just put it a little brighter. Find another little, this is the one I'm mostly displeased with. There we go. don't want too too much of this and you can't do too much there we go just here and there you can't do the whole tree again well I mean it's your tree you can do whatever you want but I'm gonna stop there and I, if I want to I can touch those up later just here and there but they don't look horrible actually I'm pretty pleased with them these kind of birch trees when you make them this way you got so much paint we've got all that loose paint back there it's hard to get them completely clean. I'm going to take a little paint thinner, grab a script liner brush here, and go into my black. Go into my black. Always roll that script liner brush back to a point, because that's what you're painting with. You're not painting with the whole brush. You're painting with just the tip of it. Okay, so which one we want to start? Let's start with this one. Something like that. Little, little branches coming out there. I'm at Start with a smaller brush here. Oh, that one's dirty. Can't use that one. I got another one laying here. Nope. I'm not going to get one either. Maybe a little another drop of paint thinner. 
I'm using that long haired one. Sometimes it needs a little more work. There we go. I think I got it now. All right, let's go here and maybe there's a, a branch kind of. We don't want them, we don't want too many. Birch trees typically have their branches kind of going up and a little bit out like that. They don't have them hanging down a lot of times. Not these white birches. You'll see tons of these in Alaska. I don't like that. My nose is, oh, my nose is running so much. Sorry, that's gross. Sorry. I don't know why I need to tell you guys that. <laughs> Wiggle and jiggle that brush and then give it a little sweep at the end and you get nice little points on those branches. And you can always raise them up a little bit, like that. The trees do that. And you just kind of fill in the top. However, and it's going to take me a while to do these. What else can I tell you guys? I'm sitting here and it's about 70 degrees outside, maybe 75 even in February. And I hear people like, oh, this is wonderful. Well, winter will be back. Plus, another thing people don't understand is if you have trees, and I think I've told you we have Japanese maples, what happens when you get warm, warm weather like this, the buds push early, uh, the leaves, and then when it comes cold again, they come out and they're like, oh Lord, we're naked. It's too cold, I need more clothes. And, and we have to cover them up, and some of them are getting quite big, with blankets. And it's just a lot of work trying to keep trees alive. I don't know if this is the new norm for the weather around here, but it should not be on February 22nd. It should not be 75 degrees. Even if you like warm weather, you, you're going to have to agree with me on that one. Start some of your branches in the middle of the tree and let them come out. Goodness. Oh, down in here you don't, you know, you're going to have a hard time. Keep that paint thin. You really just need to see a few off of these guys. If you know anything about birch trees, they always lose their... You know, I don't know if it's natural or what happens to them, but they lose their lower branches. You could come and look at my yard right now and see that. It's going to take us two days to pick up the birch branches. That have fallen. I don't need too many down in there. Try to keep that paint nice and dark, though. It will show up better down here, especially. I need a few off this guy. Keep that limb, or that, that brush, rounded to a point. No pressure on it. Just got to raise this one up a little bit. Keep that paint like ink. I just thought I was about done. I still have to finish this area because that looks awful. But that's okay. We don't care. We have to keep painting. Again, I know people... Somebody actually asked me the other day why I put such long videos on here because I want to. I was like, you could have finished that in you know an hour, but you took an hour and a half. Because I like painting. I don't like to rush it. I think I told you guys on one video the same way I am about making coffee. I can go to Starbucks or McDonald's or somewhere and get a cup of coffee, but if I make it at home, it takes me about 10 minutes to make it in a French press and it will taste better than any coffee you can get at McDonald's. I'll tell you that much. 
Oh, I can make so much money. Making coffee for people, I think. I study it, and I, uh, I really try different things, trip different beans, and it's just fun. It's kind of a hobby. Or it's coming, and I, and I really and truly didn't used to drink coffee at all until I was probably, oh, well, probably 10 years ago, maybe. I don't even think it was 10 years ago. Well, in here, I kind of regret putting this one. I mean, I, I should have stopped at three is what, I said, what I'm saying. There, make it a little darker there. Sometimes this brush gets a little weird. I don't know if you guys can see it. I think it'll work. There we go. Sometimes I also forget to add paint thinner back into my paint because you got to do that. It will dry out on you, even just sitting out like for a little bit. And you're like, I can't get this to stick. Well, it's because you didn't put enough paint thinner. This is the tedious part. I know I could probably just zoom in, or not zoom in, but speed up the video on the... <laughs> if you guys don't mind it, I don't mind it either. Looking pretty good. It's coming together better than I thought. Again, it doesn't look, doesn't look like the first one I did. The first one just had birch trees. There were no bushes or anything. It was pretty cool. Sold that around Christmas time. Did it several years ago. Be a great practice on making branches and over paint. It's easy to make a branch if there's nothing there, like up in the sky. And see, those two probably have plenty. Maybe, maybe a couple little ones right here. And I like to let them reach over the tree. Go back and throw a little. Little things off of them like that. Whew. Something like this. Biggest thing is to have fun. Always make sure it looks right. Sometimes you pull that back into the tree. See how that looks a little more natural. I don't know if you can see that with a, where I had the camera a little further away. To get everything in here. Same thing with this one. This one could just come back into that dark. It looks like it's growing out of the middle of that tree now instead of I'm gonna darken this one up a little bit. I'm not listening to my own advice here. You gotta keep that brush rounded, brown. Okay, what else? These these two probably have plenty. If anything I could make that one a little bit darker. And you can go back when this is tacked up tomorrow. You can go back and throw as many. You can do the, the branches after it's dry. There's no need to do them right now. And we all have this thing about we want to finish a painting when we sit down with it. Sometimes it's better to not come back in a day. And the paint will be a little bit tacked up, and you will have much greater success getting getting things on there. Reload that brush a lot. Having fun making these long ones that kind of reach it out here for this guy. A couple of them go out of the canvas. Go like that. There we go. I don't think that's enough. I think that's enough. Let's finish the bottom part there and then be done. Excuse me, I don't mean to make disgusting nose noises there. I swear I think it's the oil thing, I'm not sick. Alright, let's, let's just see what we can do here. 
Hell in here, maybe. Alexander Bush here that we can throw some little bushes in, maybe. Put a couple bright ones in there, go to that green color. I don't like all of these. I like the little too sparse around the light. There we go. Color didn't quite get the way I wanted it to. That's fine. I don't mind that. Let's, let's sock one right here. They, oh, went right over that tree. Going over that tree. Now that, that's weird. Maybe that don't look right. <laughs> yeah, that don't look right. Alright, I can, I'll see if I can make that happen. Little liquid white. Okay, I may have to fix that later. I'm not going to that now. Let me bring the tree back in front. Uh, let's see what else we got here. A little bit of that green in there would be nice. Leave the green out. A bit more green. Now there's a lot of bushes in here. Don't worry some of that duck showing, but in a city like this you're not gonna have a lot of space to take them. Don't be don't be a scared, as I like to say. Just uh, fill this thing up and uh, put up these bushes. There's no limits down here. There's no landscapers in my world. None of this is in the pocket I put the scene. You know, there's, uh, there's clippers back here in the background. I don't know. I'm having to travel right through all those things.
I don't know if it turned out exactly like I wanted, but it looks pretty cool. So everybody, if you try it, have fun with it, and enjoy those basic things. They look better than I thought they were. Take care, and I'll see you next time.